Hello, I'm Unbrickme, and today we're taking a look at the LEGO Ideas Grand Piano, set number 21323. This set looks incredible. It has a functioning keyboard with the piano keys and everything like that, and it's just really well detailed. However, I feel like it's gonna, you know, divide some fans down in the middle, because even though it does have its flaws, it's still a phenomenal set, and I think that the goodness of this set, the good aspects, outweigh all the negative stuff, and let me explain why. So first of all, let's open the grand piano itself. The first part, as you can see, after we open it, we get the beautiful piano keys, and actually one of the older LEGO logos is used here. It's not the original, but it is a very nice thing to have, and you can also open the side up here, and just lock it in with the axle, and boom, everything looks so perfect. And I especially love just how well the inside is detailed. There is so much attention to detail here. You see the sound strings over here. You just see pretty much everything you would find in a, in a real piano. When you press really any of the piano keys, you can see these parts rising up respective to each key. And actually, here's the really juicy part of this set. The LEGO Grand Piano actually does have three pedals here at the bottom. Both the soft pedal and the sustenuto pedal are not actually functional, they're not connected to anything. However, the sustaining pedal or the damper pedal actually does function and if you press this pedal down, these parts come up, essentially dampening the sound. Now, of course, the sensor does not detect if you actually, you know, are using this function, so it really doesn't dampen the sound coming out of your phone. However, it's still a really cool feature to have as, you know, it is authentic in actual pianos. So how do you actually play this piano? You can open up this little panel and inside of which you're gonna find the powered up hub. This one has just two ports, it's the same, you know, train hub that they use in LEGO City sets. And if you just press the button, it connects to your phone pretty much instantaneously. It's like Apple's W1 chip. I mean, this is magical. The hub connects to two things, both the uh, standard medium motor without any rotation sensor or anything, and it also connects to a distance sensor, as you can see over here. I want to demonstrate to you that this is actually a distance sensor. It is nothing more. It is taken pretty much straight out from the WeDo 2.0 system, and I've also created a very basic program where if the object is closer, the motor spins slower. However, if the object is farther, then the motor spins faster. This program is very basic and it's just meant to demonstrate that this is nothing more than, you know, a basic distance sensor. So after you connect the piano on your phone, you're actually going to see two options. You have the option to either play or to listen. First, let's go with listen. And just let's tap on uh, Play Day, which is a song composed by Donnie Chen, who is the designer of this LEGO Ideas Grand Piano. I mean, beautiful, isn't it? Just wow. Now you'll notice that the keys in the piano actually never line up with the song on the phone. Uh, that's kind of a shame, but it is understandable since the since the piano contains just one motor, and one motor has to power all of these. So, you know, it is understandable, and I forgive this set for that. Now let's look at how you can actually play the piano. So, let's choose a song. For example, I've chosen Happy Birthday to You here, and let's play it. You will notice that the way I'm playing doesn't actually sync up with any of the notes in the piano. Well, that is simply because the piano itself does not detect which key you are pressing. I mean, theoretically, you could press just one key over and over and over and over again, and the song will keep playing. I mean, I don't really see that as a big negative, but later in this review, I will show you exactly why that is the case and exactly how the mechanism works inside the piano. But I wanted you to see that even if this piano were playable, you actually really wouldn't be that comfortable playing on this piano, simply because the keys are way too small for my fingers. This set, by the way, is branded for ages 18 and up. These are adults, people with large hands. It's not gonna be comfortable to play on this piano. However, the cool thing about this piano is that you can actually take out this entire keyboard. So first, let's pull out these two axles. Then you can take off the first part here, 
and boom, the keyboard just slides right out. It really is an amazing keyboard, you know, none of the keys ever get stuck or really anything like that. It's pretty much flawless. Now I'm going to show you the mechanism. This is actually pretty authentic to how the mechanism works in real pianos. It's a hammer based mechanism and if you press down on one of the keys, the top hammer is going to go up. And yeah, each of these hammers is completely separate, but don't let that get your hopes up because if we look inside the piano, uh, here's the sensor, over here is just a distance sensor, it detects uh, when a key is pressed and it's triggered just by this one long axle over here. So if you really, you know, push up on this axle and the sensor is gonna get triggered if you push up on any part of this axle. Over here, as you can see, here's the extra long axle, which is used to power all the keys. It's connected to one medium motor with powered up. There is no rotation sensor in there, so it doesn't even know which position it's in. It just rotates with these uh, one by two little uh, half beams sticking out which actually push up the piano keys, and that's how the piano plays, essentially. This piano actually also does come with a little side build. It is a piano chair, and I think it just looks incredible from all sides. It's really well detailed, but that's not the main attraction of this thing. You can actually rotate this little part over here, and boom, you can just raise the seat however you want. It's done with a very clever Technic mechanism here. As you can see, I have it here, uh, from the bottom and from the side showing you how the mechanism kind of works. There are three main things I really appreciate with this set. Number one, the incredible attention to detail. Number two, the printed elements such as the old Lego logo and this Playday uh, sheet by Donnie Chen. And, you know, it's a printed piece. It's not a sticker or anything like that. So, I mean, it's perfect. It really is. And the best thing I appreciate out of all of this is that it is actually a motorized piano. I mean, just look at this. It plays so softly and so smooth. It's just the best piano in the world. So here's the question. Is it really worth 350 bucks? I mean, it really depends on you. If you've been looking for a Lego motorized piano set, I think you'll be satisfied with this set. It offers 3,662 pieces, making a price per piece mark well below 10 cents. You also get plenty of electronics, such as, you know, the medium motor, the distance sensor, and a powered up hub. By the way, this piano is actually really big, but I also think that if you love playing the piano, and you thought that you could play with this piano, meaning that each individual key was connected to an each individual note, maybe you'll be upset if you get this set. I feel like for the price of $350, you can buy so many great electronic pianos out there. You might, you know, get those instead of the Lego version. However, you know, Lego is Lego. There's quality here. So I don't think $350 is insanely overpriced for this set because it does justify itself with the electronics and the piece count and its size which is incredible if you enjoy watching my reviews please subscribe to my channel this is yarn brick me here and i'll see you in the next one